live from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It's 8 o'clock on this Palm Sunday. Good morning. Happy Palm Sunday. Good to have you again with us, Tim. I'm excited to be here again. This morning has been fun so far. I hope so. I hope Sarah and I are keeping you entertained. <laughs> and Sarah, we try to bring the energy. We, we try. I don't know if we succeed every morning, but we try, Sarah. No, we definitely succeed. Okay. I agree. <laughs> All right, let's bring the energy and talk about your weather today. It's kind of gloomy out there, right? So as we look outside, you can see cloudy to start the day, haze on the horizon. So we do have some areas of fog this morning. Temperatures are generally in the 60s. So it's 61 degrees in San Antonio. We're looking at 60 in New Braunfels, 59 in Seguin, 57 in Bernie, 58 in Kerrville. Relative humidity close to 100%. So we do have some areas of patchy fog. As we look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, we'll see some peaks of sunshine this afternoon, 67. Notice the winds. Winds are going to pick up today from the south at about 15 to 25 miles an hour, 74 for the high, and it's going to be even windier for a portion of tomorrow. Speaking of tomorrow, we do have a small window for rain. Those details coming up. Tiffany, Sarah. Sarah, new this morning, San Antonio police say a fight late last night turned into a shooting and a suspect barricaded in an apartment. It all started around 9 p.m. in the 5300 block of Northwest Loop 410 and Rollingdale Drive. Police say during a fight, a man pulled out a gun, pointed it at two people trying to stop the fight and ended up shooting several shots in the air. When police arrived, the shooting suspect had gone back to his apartment and refused to come out. After two hours, officers made contact with a woman who was also in the apartment and convinced them both to exit. SAPD says the shooting suspect was taken into custody and is facing multiple charges. San Antonio police have arrested a suspect in a shooting that left a 15 year old in critical condition. Police say 20 year old Zakar Polk shot at a car with the teen and his mother inside in the 9900 block of West Military Drive Friday night. The teen's mother was able to call 911 and police tracked down Polk hours later. Authorities believe there's still one more suspect out there. If you know anything that could help them call that number that you see on the top of your screen there. That's SAPD's homicide unit at 210-207-7635. San Antonio police making another arrest for a wanted murder suspect who had been on the run for nearly three months. 27 year old Cisco Barrientes has been charged in a deadly shooting that happened back on December 30th on Pennystone Avenue on the southeast side. This is video from that scene. Police say when they arrived at the home, they found a victim with gunshot wounds dead on the front porch. Barrientes was arrested Friday night. The medical examiner has identified a man that died earlier this week while trying to help someone change a flat tire. So 63 year old Mauro Mendoza Santos stopped on the side of 281 southbound near Hildebrand Avenue late Thursday night to help that stranded driver shortly after stopping. He was hit and killed. The crash has been ruled accidental. A vigil for Santos is scheduled for this evening. And a plan to curb big rig parking in San Antonio is on the road again. So we first told you about this idea back in September. While the proposed ordinance has been tweaked since then, it would still keep semi trucks from parking overnight on most city streets. Garrett Berenger tells us the trucking community says the city should pump the brakes. It's not overnight parking. They're using it as a personal parking space for weeks at a time. Robert Abraham is fed up with semi trucks legally parking on a city street close to his neighborhood. It's anybody that's driving on, on Beckway going from uh, west to east, they can't see the stop sign because it's being blocked by the semi. It's concerns like that that have his councilman, Manny Pelias, asking to further restrict street parking for 18 wheelers. An idea that was presented to the council's public safety committee for the second time. It's a problem that is in every single one of the districts in this uh, in the city. Semis already aren't supposed to park on residential streets. That's about 41 percent of San Antonio. The original proposal from September would have barred all city streets from overnight parking for big rigs. The latest plan scales back to about 78 percent of the city. But parking is already an issue. A private truck yard told us in September they have a waiting list, and so do the other lots they know. The alternative is the street. 
it's tough. Uh, they park there because they don't have an option, not because they necessarily want to. David Olson's company, Riggies, is building a new truck yard off I-10 on the east side. Their analysis found there are about 4,300 trucks within 25 miles of San Antonio, not counting larger operators that often have their own lots. Meanwhile, San Antonio police only found eight spots with parking for large commercial vehicles in and around the city, though they noted that's not an exhaustive list. But the gap between trucks and spots had some council members downshifting. It feels like right here what we're doing is we're establishing an ordinance like this that will impact small businesses without seeking alternatives to support the, the businesses. Still, the committee voted to send the plan to the full city council in April, but to discuss first, not yet to vote on. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. In your morning consumer news, the social media platform Reddit has its first week of trading on the New York Stock Exchange in the books. Friday marked the second full day of trading for the company and stocks closed at $46 per share. That's down from Thursday when Reddit made its debut with an initial price offering of $34. Shares started trading at $47 and reached a high of almost 58 bucks before closing Thursday at $50. DoorDash is launching a pilot program for a food delivery by drone. The company is testing the plan in a suburb of Roanoke, Virginia, Virginia, saying food delivery should arrive in 30 minutes or less. For now, drone delivery only handles orders from Wendy's. That's random. But will expand if the test works out. Dungeons and Dragons is celebrating its 50th anniversary by teaming up with Converse. A limited edition collection of Chuck Taylors will be out next month, designed mostly around the earliest versions of the game. The sneakers start at 80 bucks. Oh boy, and if the sneakers, they weren't enough, Lego has unveiled <laughs> a new Dungeons and Dragons brick adventure, also celebrating the game's 50th anniversary. The set has over 3,000 pieces and was designed by a fan through a challenge on the LEGO Ideas platform. It features a tavern with a removable roof, a dungeon, and a tower. The set also comes with six minifigures, including an orc rogue, a gnome fighter, an elf wizard, oh boy, and more. The new set costs $360 and will be available on April 4th. Today is Palm Sunday, also known as Passion Sunday. It marks the start of Holy Week where Christians throughout the world celebrate the day Jesus triumphantly entered Jerusalem days before his crucifixion. The Vatican is paying tribute this morning. Pope Francis presided over Palm Sunday Mass in St. Peter's Square. Holy Week is considered the most sacred week of the church's calendar when Christians across the globe Prepare for the celebration of Easter. I went to Palm Sunday Vigil last night. Um, you know how they give you your palms? Were you one of the kids that could just like, like whip it into a, a cross or a figure? <laughs> I, I could never. It I takes... finally figured it out as a you know 30 something year old adult. I figured it out real quick class. <gasps> I was so proud of myself. We're very proud of you, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Time now, 808, 61 degrees. Okay, how the Chavez Legacy and Educational Foundation is recognizing one of our own here at KSAT for her years of hard work and dedication after the break. And we love her so much. Love her so much. And then look outside with live cam. It's gonna be cloudy today, but Sarah's gonna break it down if you are heading out to church or having any outdoor activities planned. We'll be right back. She's a San Antonio staple that we're proud to call a colleague and friend. Jessie Degollado has served her community for decades through journalism. Oh, she's an icon and one of my role models. And now the Chavez Legacy and Educational Foundation is recognizing her for her years of hard work and dedication. Jessie is a recipient of the foundation's 2023 Aguila Lifetime Achievement Award. Her work in the field as a reporter has stood the test of time. And this morning, we want to take a look back on Jesse's Hall of Fame career. Stephanie Serna has her story. Curiosity and my love for the written word combined to become my desire to be a reporter. Born and raised in Laredo, Jesse Degollado says being a reporter was a dream she had 
ever since she was a little girl. My mother, in fact, told me, Ay, mijita, you're going to starve. You're going to starve, my little girl. You're going to starve. Well, I told her, Mom, I don't think so, but you'll see. You'll see. Jessie is a pioneer when it comes to Latinas pursuing a career in journalism. Her journey began in 1977 in the Valley and eventually made her way to Quesa in 1984. And she's been here ever since, covering countless stories. In Piedras Negras, in Uvalde County, in Monterrey, from the Davis Mountains in far west Texas, at the presidential residence Los Pinos in Mexico City, Whoa. at the papal site near Denver. Jesse has been honored by the Cesar Chavez Legacy and Educational Foundation, Catholic Television of San Antonio, and the San Antonio Association of Hispanic Journalists. She has even been inducted into the San Antonio Women's Hall of Fame. I was just the girl from Laredo, Texas that made it in the valley and was blessed to come to San Antonio and I've been here as long as I have. And so for that, I am proud. Jesse says when she started out in the business, the landscape was much different. 20, 30 years ago when I started, it was a very much male dominated world. She says a lot has changed, including the role of Latinas and women in general. Now we have women who are in charge making decisions and helping running the show. When it comes to young women wanting to pursue a career in journalism, Jesse has a few words of advice. First, ask yourself, why do I want to do this? How much do I want to do this? Is it something that I'm willing to commit to? She says those are the most important questions you need to ask yourself because this business can be very demanding. Also, sometimes relationships and families can suffer because they don't understand what we do. And sometimes it takes 24 hours a day and Jesse's journey isn't over yet. She'll continue telling the stories that matter to you most, impacting people right here in San Antonio and inspiring more young Latinas to follow in her footsteps. Just know that you really do have it in you. If you want it bad enough, you do have it in you and it will come out. Stephanie Serna. Case at 12 News. Well, we are just so lucky to work with Miss Jesse. You know, I know mm -hmm. Tiffany and Sarah, you guys get to sit next to yes. Jesse every day. What does she mean to you guys? She, um, I mean, I don't feel like both of us as Latinas in the newsroom, like now here at KSAT, she paved the way mm -hmm. for us. And it's just so beautiful how she does it with such grace and um, class. She, I know, has faced a lot of obstacles, but she always takes it with, you know, she, she takes those challenges and she conquers them with a smile and um, in such a graceful way. And she took us under yes, our wing. Yes, she did. And we came in and... We can connect in so many different ways, right? Mm -hmm. Especially with stories. Like I covered the border for many years, so then we always talk about that. And then we can talk about just like, the Guadalupe Cultural Center or anything happening in our community because she's a great listener and she's just a great person. She all is around. a great she's listener. She's the best storyteller um, we have at KSAT. I love down. you, Miss Jesse. Love yes. you. Thanks Congratulations. For Congratulations. Well, today's going to be a, a bit of a mixed bag. You know, not necessarily gorgeous outside, but nothing should prevent you from getting outside today. We're not going to have any rain, even though it looks a little gray out there right now. It's mainly just gray and humid. It's 61 degrees outside. Dew points are near 60 degrees. We do have some areas of patchy fog, four mile visibility in New Braunfels, five mile visibility out in Castroville. Again, temperatures on the mild side. Yesterday we were starting in the low 50s. Today we're starting some 10 degrees warmer than that. It's 64 in Del Rio, 63 in Carrizo Springs, 61 in Gonzales and 62 in Beeville. As we look at our KSAT 12 hour forecast for the day today, cloudy and becoming breezy. We'll see a few peaks of sun. Around noon it'll be 67, around about four o'clock, 74 degrees. Partly cloudy and breezy in the afternoon. We're talking wind gusts of up to 30, 35 miles per hour. And then this evening is going to be very mild. You will not need a jacket in the evening hours. Temperatures in the mid 60s. Take a look at the weather setup. We've seen clouds slowly increase just over the last few hours. It is relatively quiet across the state of Texas, but there is a big low pressure system bringing not only rainfall to parts of California, the Four Corners region, but it's also providing some 
fuel for some snow across areas in the Dakotas. Now, unfortunately, by the time this upper level low gets to us, the atmosphere will be worked over a little bit and we really won't see much rain, if any, from this cold front that is going to be moving through Texas. It's a very weak front. Instead, the biggest impact we'll see are increasing wind gusts. Take a look at these wind gusts right now in Abilene, wind gusts of 41 miles per hour. As this low approaches, our winds are going to pick up from the south. And so throughout the day today, we'll have a few wind gusts of up to 30, 35 miles per hour. That's going to be the case here in San Antonio and across the hill country. I also want to mention that Tonight will be pretty breezy too. If your trash day is tomorrow, uh, make sure that you get out there early to bring that trash can in. The winds are going to be pretty gusty tomorrow in the morning hours. We will see a front move through and the front is going to bring a small window for rain. We'll talk about that in a bit, but behind that front, it's still going to be pretty windy. Wind direction will turn to the west. Take a look at tomorrow afternoon. In San Antonio, wind gusts of up to 40 miles per hour, but the further west you go, the higher the wind gusts. We could see some wind gusts of up to 50 miles per hour west of San Antonio. That's going to lead to some elevated fire danger for areas mainly west of San Antonio, but it's still a good idea to try to avoid any fire danger around San Antonio. On Monday, there is a fire weather watch for most of the counties west of Bear County, as we'll have gusty conditions and relatively dry fuels out there. Again, I want to mention that early tomorrow morning when that front moves through pretty much pre dawn, that's when we'll have a thin line of showers move through San Antonio potential for a storm or two up in the hill country, and we will talk more about that coming up in the next half hour. But uh, the biggest impact to most folks around San Antonio is going to be the wind gusts tomorrow winds up to gusting up to 45 miles per hour. Otherwise, in the week ahead, we're going to have chilly mornings in the 40s, comfortable afternoons in the 70s. Now, springtime in Texas is often all about those blue bonnets, but we've also got poppies in Castroville, and Sarah planted some of those poppies in her yard. We're going to have a look at that picture coming up in a bit. Thanks to you. you gave me those seeds. I'm very and excited. And Lloyd Ross in Castroville. Thank, thank you, Lloyd. There's a big story and a lovely story behind this, mm -hmm. so we're excited to share that. 820, 61 degrees. It can live on surfaces for weeks and it's highly contagious and it can make you ooh, extremely sick. We're talking about the dreaded norovirus, which has been going around, the steps you can take to reduce your risk of getting sick and keep it from spreading in your own home. We'll tell you that in just a bit. A look at your lotto numbers, your pick three, six, eight, five, fireball three, your daily four, nine, one, two, nine, fireball three, your cash five, four, seven, 10, 1731. Texas Lotto, 7, 9, 26, 42, 44, 51. We just had a big winner, the Texas Lotto here in San Antonio. I think it was like 27 million. Powerball, nobody won. Over 700 million. Now I'm sure it's going to move to about 800 million. 6, 23, 25, 34, 51, 3. The next drawing is tomorrow. Power play is 2. If you've been hit with a few days of intense nausea and vomiting, there's a good chance the culprit was a bug called norovirus. That's right. Um, norovirus is sometimes mistakenly called the stomach flu, but it's actually not caused by the influenza virus. Um, symptoms of norovirus, vomiting, diarrhea, stomach pains. Um, sometimes you can get fever and there can be a ton of this, as many as like 21 million cases every year in the U.S. Norovirus gets a lot of attention for making cruise ship travelers miserable, but it can spread quickly in any spot where a lot of people are in close quarters. And as any parent will tell you, that means it's very common in schools. Worse, the virus is very contagious and hardy. It can stay on surfaces such as doorknobs and handrails for weeks. So how can you avoid it? So unfortunately, there's no vaccine for norovirus. Um, so hand washing is really your number one thing. And that means diligently washing hands, frequently washing your hands, and thoroughly washing them with soap and water. Um, hand sanitizer alone is not going to cut it. If someone in your home has gotten sick with norovirus, disinfect contaminated surfaces with bleach-based cleaning products or make your own using 5 to 25 tablespoons of household bleach added to a gallon of water. Wash linens, towels, and clothes that might have been contaminated. 
If you get sick, stay home so that you don't spread it to anyone else. Um, just allow the virus to run its course, usually about one to three days. Drink a lot of liquids as severe dehydration can land you in the emergency room. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Wash your hands. Great tip. Yeah. <laughs> 826, 61 degrees. Social media and its impact on children. Coming up, we'll explain what a new study is revealing and why. Plus, what a new program in Bear County is doing to help children set boundaries when it comes to social media use. Good morning. It's 830 and we're so happy you're joining us. If you're having your cafecito, your tea or even a smoothie or your breakfast tacos, which <laughs> would go so hard right now. <laughs> Good morning. We're all talking about food this morning. Thank as well. you so much for joining us this morning and happy Palm Sunday. Um, Sarah, yesterday was so beautiful outside yeah. today. Uh, Kind of depends what you how you define beauty. A little monkey, although it looks like a poppy is growing right out of my head. <laughs> oh, it's so it? beautiful. Oh, Look at that. You. Yeah, let's start with the beautiful image. These are the poppies that are growing in your yard, correct, Sarah? Yes, and it's thanks to Sarah Spivey that I'm actually growing poppies. I had my first bloom, and these seeds came all the way from Castroville because yes. we have a loyal viewer who sent you those seeds, Sarah. Yeah, Lloyd Ross, uh, I did a story with him before in the past. He's got beautiful poppies there on his property. And at the time that he gave me the seeds, I really didn't have a, a backyard or a garden to put them in. And so handed them to trusty, trusty Sarah Costa, who knows how to garden and take a look at that. Beautiful to see the first blooms there. Uh, of course, you know, it's also blue bonnet season. So if you wanted to head up 281, those blue bonnets look pretty good. And by the way, clouds, actually make for the best filter for any kind of photos if you want to take family photos in there the blue bonnets. I know about those <laughs> photos, I guess. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at temperatures. 61 degrees in San Antonio, 60 in New Braunfels, 6, 59 in Seguin and in Bernie. Notice that humidity anywhere from 90% to 100%. We have got high humidity out there right now and relative humidity. And uh, we do have some areas of patchy fog, although the winds are really starting to pick up and the winds will prevent fog from developing. We've got a sustained wind in Kerrville right now from the south at 20 miles per hour. And today is going to be windy. We'll have southeast winds 15 to 25, gusting up to 30 miles an hour. A few peaks of sunshine in the afternoon, high temperature of 74. So today's weather headline is that it's going to be breezy and mostly cloudy. But tomorrow in the morning, we'll have brief rain. That could lead to a damp commute in places. We'll talk about that. And then finally, I do want to mention that fire danger is higher tomorrow because we'll have wind gusts even gustier than today, up to 40 to 45 miles per hour. Lots to unpack in the forecast in the next 48 hours. Those details coming up. Sarah. Sarah, thank you. It's a tough thing to admit, yet a necessary thing to prioritize. A suicide crisis has rocked the San Antonio Police Department. Within a year and a half, the department says eight active and retired San Antonio police officers took their own lives. Danielle Ibada shows us how the department is working with officers experiencing trauma. On the worst days of someone's life, San Antonio police officers are there. They've dealt with situations that can be tough to process. And then there are times where they're going to be like, you know what, I don't... Sergeant Tina Barron says when she first joined the department, peer support was unheard of. Having a discussion to say that we were on the job, we had a call, it was a critical incident, and it's just not really sitting well with me. And I need to kind of take a minute to sit back and think about it or process it before I go to the next call. And we just didn't do that. The department added more resources in 2011. A few years later, the department was hit with a suicide crisis. It impacted a lot of us in a lot of different ways. And we lost some guys in numbers that we just had never seen before. In 2021, San Antonio police say two officers took their own lives. The next year, in 2022, that number jumped up to a total of six officers. For active duty, two retirees. We got to a point where uh, we had to do something different. It's why SAPD created the Wellness Unit. It helps officers connect with mental health resources. Yeah, officers to... like Gabriel Mendoza check in with those who might need help. Sometimes you'll get uh, individuals that are a little bit more emotional 
uh, than others, um, some that are a little bit more disengaged. To help others open up? Yeah, we don't wear uniforms, we, we dress down. Mendoza says he has to be vulnerable too. I've had those bad days. I've had those dark times. And, and I think that a lot of us experience them and a lot of us don't talk about our story. Sergeant Barron adds that being there for officers helps them better serve the community. For us though, to give our best when we're out in the community, it's important for us within ourselves to give each other our best. Daniela Ibarra, KSAT 12 News. And if you or someone you know is struggling with mental health or thoughts of suicide, help is available. You can call or text 988 to find those resources. In your Texas headlines, fraud charges could soon be dropped for Attorney General Ken Paxton. It's according to the Texas Tribune, lawyers in Paxton's felony securities fraud case are discussing a deal to drop the charges if the Attorney General does community service and pays restitution. Paxton has been under indictment on two first degree fraud charges and a third degree charge since 2015. Wednesday, the U.S. Supreme Court heard the case of a Texas councilwoman who said her arrest was politically motivated. Former Cass Castle Hills Councilwoman Sylvia Gonzalez wants to sue the city officials who say she had her arrested as retaliation for trying to unseat a city manager. A federal court ruled she cannot. Now, the high court will decide if she can sue those officials or if qualified immunity shields them from certain lawsuits. Right now on KSAT.com, we have a full breakdown of this story and the incidents that led up to Gonzalez's arrest. Just look for this article. San Antonio College has new leadership. Its former president has moved to a new role with the Alamo College District. The district announced Nadine Gonzalez de Jesus will serve as its presidential project executive effective immediately. So Gonzalez de Jesus served as SAC's president for just over a year. She got criticized in October over how she handled a teach-in for a Palestine event. Alamo College says Dr. Francisco Solis will be the interim replacement. And now to former President Donald Trump's day of financial reckoning, as tomorrow is his deadline for posting that nearly $500 million bond in the civil fraud case he lost. ABC's Aaron Katursky explains how this could affect the real estate he owns. This morning, Donald Trump has one day to secure a bond or risk enforcement of the nearly half billion dollar judgment imposed on him for a decade's worth of corporate fraud. It's a large amount and also it's significant because we all know that most of former president's assets are tied up in real estate and real estate that's high profile. Trump has long boasted of his success, telling the New York attorney general in a deposition it's what got him elected. I mean, I became president because of the brand. OK, I became president. Uh, I think it's the hottest brand in the world. Now, Trump's lawyers have said he doesn't have the cash. Obtaining a bond so large, they said, is a practical impossibility. But as New York Attorney General Letitia James told me last month, Trump has to pay. Does he have the money to pay this? That's really not my business. The judgment is $363 million plus $100 million in interest, which accrues each and every day at 9% interest. If he does not have funds uh, to pay off the judgment, uh, then we will seek, uh, you know, judgment enforcement mechanisms in court. That could include freezing bank accounts, collecting rent from Trump's tenants, or seizing some of his properties, like Trump's golf course and Seven Springs Estate in Westchester County, or his triplex apartment and 40 Wall Street in Manhattan. The assets that Attorney General James can go after are not just limited to assets located in New York State. She's very much able to go after assets of the Trump Organization located in other states. That was ABC's Aaron Katursky reporting. OK, Monarch Fest, it returns to its two day festival at the San Antonio Zoo, and it's a big party for Monarch butterflies. I love that. A party for butterflies. They deserve it. <laughs> it's a family friendly event. There's going to be games and even maybe some dancing. That's right. Our photojournalist Alexis is out there now joining us with Nani Melendez, the public relations coordinator for the San Antonio Zoo. Hey, good morning, Nani. Hi, good morning. Hey, okay, Nani, I had some friends. They went out to Monarch Fest yesterday. It continues today. So what can families expect when they head out to the zoo today? 
Yeah, so once they come to the zoo, they can expect various activities and educational activities where uh, families and people of all ages can come and learn about everything monarchs and the importance of their conservation and protecting them through games, um, education. We have education tables as well as different activities. And let's not forget our butterfly house. If families want to have a more um, one-on-one or closer interaction with um, all different types of butterflies from all over the world. We know that you've all been preparing for this moment. Are you all excited for today? Are you all excited for today's event, Nani? Oh yes, we are super excited for today's event. Um, Monarch Fest is always a great activity to have, to come and celebrate every year. Um, families from all over come and, and are part of the Monarch Fest and, and celebrate the, the butterflies and their migration. Well, Nani, thank you so much for your time today. And hey, the zoo opens in about 20 minutes. So if you're watching with the kiddos, thank you so much. And Tiff, as a monarch enthusiast, <laughs> butterfly lover. We know this. <laughs> um, the reason why monarchs yeah. are so important is they're because they are an important uh, pollinator mm -hmm. for us. And they are migrating back up North America. So they go, they do their annual migration down to Mexico. They stop in mission at the National Butterfly Center. And then I kind of say San Antonio's is like the Bucky's where they, you know, they stop, they fill up on gas and they eat, you know, different nectar and they take a rest okay. as they continue oh, up good. to North America. Yes, no, All right, well, oh, thank you so much. And time now is 841, 62 degrees. We're gonna take a live look outside. There are those clouds that Sarah Spivey has been talking about all morning long. And will they, will the sun come out soon? Maybe, maybe a little, she's giving me a maybe, but hey, she'll tell you when we come back. Welcome back. First, it was the Surgeon General's advisory warning about social media's impact on kids, then lawsuits against social media companies about kids' mental health decline. And now there's new evidence from medical studies on its detrimental effects. Well, Bear County and the state of Texas decided enough is enough and they've created a new program to teach kids about what's happening to them. Our Courtney Friedman explains how a local teenager thinks it might work. 15-year-old Evelyn Freer's mental health started to spiral during the pandemic when the whole world was contained to her screen. I was just like so isolated from just like talking to people other than my family. Like I didn't have any friends during the pandemic. The feeling like you're not pretty enough for social media. She withdrew, felt depressed, unworthy, and eventually suicidal. Evelyn told some friends who thought she was joking. So even though it was hard, she told her mom, Deborah Bailly. She let me know about the cutting. She had, you know, been kind of hiding it. And, um, and her personality was completely different by that time. She immediately got Evelyn help that saved her life. Now they both want to break mental health stigma by supporting initiatives like the new CHAT program, which stands for Community Health Awareness in Adolescents and Teens. It was created by Bear County's Center for Healthcare Services, which is connected to the state of Texas. We've got a series of four presentations right now on online gaming, online grooming, the positives and negatives of social media use and sleep hygiene. CHCS Children's Clinical Director Dolores Haynes wants kids to think twice. Am I playing with another kid or am I playing with an adult? And this person may be requested, making friend requests. And even if you delete a post online, it's not really gone. The program helps parents set boundaries and encourages both adults and kids to look for signs that someone's in crisis. When your friend tells you that they are having suicidal thoughts, you need to take it seriously and you need to ask them if they are okay. Evelyn has already helped others. They told me that they were struggling and they needed help, so I told somebody because they needed that. Thank you so much, Courtney, for that story and Sarah. Um, Yesterday, lots of sunshine. Right. Today, not so much. Okay. <laughs> well, we are going to have a few peaks of sunshine today. It's just noticeably muggy out there. I don't know if you've stepped outside. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. noticeably <laughs> muggy. Not a great hair day. That's all I'm going to say. Ponytail day. Yeah, ponytail day. Like it. Love it.
probably will do that Lots later. That's a hairspray. Yep. All right. <laughs> 61 in San Antonio, 59 in Bernie, 59 in Comfort. It's 58 in Kerrville, 60 in Rio Medina, 60 in New Braunfels, and 62 in Pleasanton. There's some areas of patchy fog, especially out near New Braunfels and in Castroville. New Braunfels visibility is down to five miles. Castroville visibility down to four. In your weather headlines, let's address that first headline. Breezy and mostly cloudy today. Here's a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast cloudy this morning. We'll be looking at a few peaks of sunshine this afternoon, 67 at noon. By the way, uh, winds are really going to start to pick up here shortly. We'll have south winds at 15 to 25, gusting up to 30, 74 for the high temperature today. And then this evening will still be in the 60s. So it is not going to be a cool evening by any means, and it's going to stay pretty breezy as well. Here's a look at those the wind gust forecast for the day and you can see again a few wind gusts of up to 35 40 miles per hour possible especially this evening so a windy day on deck for us 74 in san antonio but it'll be 77 in hondo 71 in kerrville so a little cooler up in the hill country clouds will be a bit more stubborn up there 83 though in del rio we're going to see some clearing of the skies out west first and that's why it's going to be pretty warm i mean laredo it could be close to 90 degrees today so let's transition to talk about our next weather headline that Monday morning we are going to have some brief rain which could lead to a damp morning commute in some spots A weak cold front going to be moving through Texas. This cold front is going to fire off storms from Dallas to San Angelo later tonight. Now some of those storms could make it into the hill country overnight. So if you're in areas like Bandera, Yavali, Kerrville, Fredericksburg, you may hear some thunder in the overnight hours. We're talking after midnight, but by the time those showers and that rain reaches San Antonio, they'll really fizzle and we're really only looking at a brief window for some light rain in San Antonio between about 4 a.m. and 6 a.m. By the way, you could see uh, you could hear a rumble of thunder too early in San Antonio. It's just not as likely as it is across the hill country, and we do not have any risk for hail in San Antonio, so no need to worry about that. As we head into early tomorrow morning, again close to the morning commute, most of that rain will be east of San Antonio, but it could still be damp in spots, so keep that in mind. Then for most of Monday, it's just going to be sunny and windy. That's our next weather headline. Some fire danger because it. It is going to be windy Monday behind that front. Winds are going to turn to the west, and we could see a few gusts of up to 40, 45 miles per hour around San Antonio, but even higher wind gusts out west toward Del Rio, Lakey, Yavaldi, Carrizo Springs. Those winds will finally start to calm in the evening tomorrow. So that brief window for a few showers before sunrise, maybe a storm, then gusty with gusts up to 45 miles per hour. As for the rest of the week, though, it is going to be a fairly quiet week. We're going to have chilly mornings in the upper 40s, comfortable afternoons in the 70s. More news for you after the break. A big change for one of the most popular cookies on the market. The makers of Chips Ahoy say they are debuting a new recipe for their classic cookie. It's the biggest change to the cookie in 10 years and will include chocolate chips with higher amounts of cacao. Now this cookie will also have vanilla ex extract. Mm, okay, so the new cookies are now available in select stores. Nationwide rollout starts in April. All right, we are going to have a fairly breezy day with uh, temperatures up to 74 degrees, gusts up to 30, 35 miles an hour, brief window for rain tomorrow, pretty much pre-dawn. So unless you commute very early in the morning, you may not even have to deal with the rain during the commute tomorrow morning. We'll be looking at gusts up to 45 miles per hour behind that front, chilly mornings, comfortable afternoons. It is Sunday, guys. What have you guys got going on today? Well, it's Palm Sunday, yes. so you can either go to church today. I went yesterday. Going today. Ditto. Are you um, going to do any? I need to do yard work. My husband did the yard work <laughs> yesterday. Yay, Michael! So we get to relax today after church, of course. So. Hey, y'all have a relaxing, wonderful Sunday.